Hi everyone, this is Bina007 back for another 10 minute movie review from the London Film Festival. And today I'm talking to you about The Program, which is a new film by director Stephen Frears, who has made films such as Philomena. And it is the fictional retelling of the Lance Armstrong story. I'm not sure if it needs any introduction. He was one of the most famous sports people in the world, seven times winner of the Tour de France but always dogged by allegations of doping, as indeed the entire sport was, particularly by one journalist, David Walsh of the Sunday Times, who Lance Armstrong actually sued successfully and won for libel when he accused him of cheating. But it all ended in tears when former teammates and colleagues started to turn themselves in, and USADA finally gave him a lifetime ban, culminating in what was, I think, one of the iconic interviews of all time, Lance Armstrong's appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show, which was for many of us fascinating for its psychology. I personally have been interested in this story and read everything that David Walsh has written, not just because I'm interested in the psychology of someone who is so dedicated to winning that he just views doping as another plane on which to train but because of the ecosystem that it suggests. What is it about us as fans, and I'm a big sports fan, that needs our heroes to be living some kind of fairy tale? Why is it that when we see the story of an amazing guy who suffered cancer, came back and won the Tour de France, that we want to believe in that fairy tale? Why do we need to make our heroes perfect? And also, why are we just so reluctant to admit that the rumours might be true. I mean, this has been true in recent years of very famous stars in the UK who it transpires, everybody knew that they were paedophiles, but no one actually came forward. Why is it that we live with these open secrets? So I think the Lance Armstrong story is endlessly fascinating. It's already produced two documentaries, one by Alex Gibney that was very good indeed, called The Armstrong Lie. And I really was very excited to see the programme. All of which is a rather long preamble to say that I think the direction of this film, the structure of it, the the writing by John Hodge is fairly straightforward. It didn't seem to me to be taking any risks or to be going any deeper into the psychology of Lance Armstrong other than to merely other than to merely sort of connect the dots of the famous scenes that we who are familiar with the story will be very well known to us. So we start with no childhood, we never meet Lance Armstrong's mum. We don't see why he's a driven character. He just shows up in the early 90s in Europe and is literally having mud kicked in his face by faster cyclists and almost immediately decides to dope. So we're straightforwardly into the action. And then very quickly, maybe 10 minutes in, he gets cancer. And we see him battling that and that incredibly famous, infamous, contested meeting between him, his doctors and the Andreus, who were, you know, a fellow cyclist, one of his teammates and his wife, who Betsy Andreu has always claimed that at that meeting he said he doped. So that happens very quickly. And then we move on very quickly through his seven times Tour de France winning escapades, bullying of people who want to snitch. And we see the ego grow, the denials grow. And then as we move into the second hour of the film, this is a guy under attack, basically, partly because of his own hubris and just bad decisions. So a guy who had been so perfect in executing the program of Michele Ferrari, the doping program, who had left nothing to chance, wins his seven times Tour de France and then retires. And frankly, as his coach in the film says, if he had left it at that, it would probably never have been uncovered. But his ego, his vanity, whatever it is, he decides to come back. And that's the point at which he pushes Floyd Landis too far, the guy who has been caught for doping and doesn't understand why he's been caught and and Lance hasn't. And he decides to go to USADA and, and spill the beans. And that's the end of it. So really, per this particular film, Lance makes two key mistakes. Number one, he comes back. And number one, when Floyd reaches out to him, he doesn't bring him in. He cuts him loose. And that's what causes the downfall. I suppose what's surprising about this treatment is there is no real investigation of Lance's private life. You barely meet the wife. You don't meet the mum. You don't see the kids. You don't really see a lot of the famous characters and other riders that 
those of us who've read books on this will maybe be expecting. The Andreis feature very infrequently, and maybe I'm wondering if there's ongoing legal action as a reason they couldn't do that. Michele Ferrari, actually, as the sort of the evil doctor, again, is not very much investigated. I mean, he sort of comes to us ready formed as a man with a deficiency of ethics, but we don't understand why. Why is it that he goes beyond what normal doctors would do with dope? Um, he's almost like a pantomime villain. He reminded me a little bit of the Hedda Hopper character in Trombo. He's just there for sort of comic evil villainy. And actually, maybe what's even more surprising when you listen to the trailer, a short excerpt of which will be after this review, is that there's not much of David Walsh, played by Chris O'Dowd. He's a great comic Irish actor. Um, He's there and he's frustrated and he's investigating and he's getting sued. But ultimately, it kind of feels like he's the antagonist for the first half of the film, but then it switches to Jesse Plemons as Floyd Landis. Both of them give great performances, but it just feels sort of, oh, where did David Walsh go? Okay, fine. There's also, if you're a racing fan, very little bike racing footage. I mean, what there is is well shot, but this isn't really a film, to use Lance Armstrong's terms, it's not about the bike. So... Why should you still watch this film? Because I think you should. I think this is an exceptional film. And it's purely because of Ben Foster's performance as Lance Armstrong. And it's not a caricature. It's not that he looks so much like Lance, although he looks enough like Lance that you kind of believe it. It's the fact that he somehow gets some of those facial reactions that we have become so familiar with in these documentaries and in the Oprah Winfrey in- Oprah Winfrey interview. So he can do the driven, he can do the charm, the, the kind of the disbelieving laughter, the bullying, but there's a certain thing he does when he's prepared to lie to you and prepared to look you in the face and intimidate you into believing him. The narrowing of the eyes, the kind of the forceful personality that he just gets. And when he's in those moments, in the key interviews, it's absolutely chilling. There's also a scene towards the end of this movie where everything's falling apart and he's been brought in front of USADA to hear about his lifetime ban, where Ben Foster goes through about 10 emotions in the space of two minutes. He's angry, he's disbelieving, he's upset, he doesn't want to show them he's upset. It's just an absolute masterclass in acting. So for me, the programme needed to be made. I mean, this is a story that's going to go on and on. It's not the ultimate fictional film of Lance Armstrong. It just doesn't go deep enough. But it's a useful primer for people who don't know enough about it, I guess. It doesn't matter. Watch this film for Ben Foster. I will be amazed if I see a better performance than this all year. And if I do, my God, I'm in for something special. Ben Foster has to get an Oscar nomination for this. So if you've seen the programme and agree or disagree with my take, please feel free to leave a comment on the blog at beena007.com. Otherwise, thank you for listening. (laughs) 